Welcome to The Know, I'm Ashley Jenkins. It's Tuesday, so let's round up some news. The battle of Kojima versus Konami has made just about everyone on the planet Team Kojima lately, but there's one person who's not in the legendary game designer's corner, former Solid Snake voice actor David Hayter. Speaking with Game Informer for a recent podcast about his legacy as Solid Snake, Hayter recounted that in addition to replacing him for Metal Gear Solid V Phantom Pain, Kojima tried to replace him for his role in Metal Gear Solid 3 with Kurt Russell and made him re-audition for the role of Old Snake. When asked if he would ever play Phantom Pain, Hayter said the game would be, quote, 60 hours of humiliation. He then went on to say, I've got no particular love for Kojima and that they would not be working together again. I think the rest of us kind of already knew that second part. I guess love doesn't bloom on the battlefield after all. Critics, having no love for Batman vs Superman, certainly didn't stop the film from having a super opening weekend, despite sitting at a 28% on Rotten Tomatoes, which is way lower than the 41% we were surprised by uh, last week. Zack Snyder's Orphan Battle brought in a decently impressive haul of $170 million domestically and $424 million worldwide. That makes it the fourth highest superhero debut of all time, following, what else, some Avengers movies and Iron Man 3, and the sixth biggest opening weekend of all time. The biggest question now is whether or not the movie can maintain its traction thanks to the negative reviews. Some outlets are projecting a drop in its second weekend by as much as 65%, with others predicting the movie may not even be profitable when it ends its theatrical run. Well, that'll certainly keep those sad Affleck memes alive and well. That was hard to watch. Valve might be having its own case of sad Affleck right now. The Masters of Steam have just been found guilty by an Australian federal court for breaching Australian consumer law. This all started because of a lawsuit filed by the Australian Competition and Consumer Commission over Valve's refund policy, or uh, more accurately, lack thereof, back in 2014. Uh, Valve since started a refund policy, but that wasn't the case at the time of the filing. For its defense, Valve argued that it wasn't actually doing business in Australia, it was merely allowing access to its US-based store, but that didn't really fly with the Australian court for obvious reasons. They found Valve to have misled customers both in Steam's terms and conditions as well as its refund policy. This is actually a landmark case for Australia as it's the first ruling to apply the definition of goods to digital software. As for the damages, there will be a hearing on April 15th to determine any repercussions. Just make them release Half-Life 3. That'll make everyone happy. There might be more than a perpetual lack of Half-Life 3 making us all depressed. It could be social media instead. According to a new study from the University of Pittsburgh School of Medicine, people who check social media most throughout the week are 2.7 times more likely to develop depression than those who check their accounts less. The study found that nearly 25% of its subjects had high indicators of depression, which is a pretty startling number. Considering this was one of the first major studies conducted to find a link between social media use and depression, these results are hardly conclusive. As for whether or not social media is the cause of the high indicators of depression, the study's lead said that it would require more research. It may just be that individuals with depressive symptoms turn to social media more. I'm sure he'd change his tune pretty quickly if his mom friended him on Facebook. People may accuse Harvard students of being born on third base, but they probably never accused them of cheating in a video game tournament before. That's what happened this weekend thanks to Heroes of the Dorm, the huge collegiate tournament for Heroes of the Storm, sponsored by Blizzard and ESPN. Harvard's team Ambush was disqualified from the event for allegedly using ringers when it was found that one of the players was sharing his Battle.net account with a higher rated player who wasn't on the team's roster for the tournament. The students and the players they shared their accounts with are now banned indefinitely from the tournament. Heroes of the Dorm is down to its heroic four. The semis will take place on April 9th, with the grand final played on April 10th. Assuming the teams left haven't all tapped Cloud9 to play for them or something. That would be awkward. Humanity might want to consider recruiting some ringers of its own for a showdown with DeepMind in another Blizzard game, Hearthstone. That collectible card game, along with Magic the Gathering, are reportedly the new games being studied by Google's game-playing AI. Hey, it dominated the world's best Go player, why shouldn't it set its diabolical metal sights on crushing the hopes of nerds everywhere? DeepMind is currently analyzing Hearthstone cards, and getting it to understand the cards and generate the proper results in different contexts isn't as easy as you'd think. Apparently, collectible card games are kinda tricky, who knew? 
While it's not a master Hearthstone player just yet, DeepMind is making progress, although the more specialized cards do give it a little bit of a fit. You probably shouldn't expect it to be rolling into your comic book shop anytime soon, and that's a good thing too, uh, because Google can certainly afford a lot more packs than you can. What was Epic's original vision for Gears of War 4? That's the question Game Informer asks in a new report detailing the handoff of Epic's famous franchise to Microsoft. According to the article, Epic actually did six months of work on Gears of War 4 before ultimately deciding to part with the series. They sold it to Microsoft for an undisclosed sum back in 2013. Producer Rod Ferguson, who formerly worked at Epic and is now heading the project up at the Coalition, says the idea to set the game in the future with Phoenix's son, as well as the game's new enemy, all came from Epic's initial pre-production. As for why they decided to part with it, Ferguson says the writing was on the wall once Chinese company Tencent purchased a 48.4% stake in Epic, and folks like Cliff Blazinski left the company as it shifted more to PC titles like Fortnite and Paragon. See, we just have more stuff to blame on Cliffy B, right? Yeah. We can blame a lot on Dude Huge, but he's probably not the reason the FBI has totally bungled its way through trying to get into the San Bernardino shooter's iPhone. But apparently, the FBI has finally figured out a way to hack into the phone without Apple's help. This comes from the FBI, who said yesterday that they've gotten into the phone. This means they've now asked a federal judge to drop the court order, which prompted Apple to assist in creating a backdoor into iOS that would bypass the phone's encryption. No word yet on if the FBI has found anything that would aid in its investigation, but this does prompt a few other questions, like how do they actually pull it off? Does this mean our private information isn't safe from the government? We probably won't have long to wait for those answers, since really it's only a matter of time before they order another tech company to do the exact same thing. Well, that does it for our first roundup of the week. We'll have another one for you guys on Thursday, presumably filled with leaks and rumors since the internet can't stop seeming to creating those. For more geeky updates on humans beating nature and Affleck being sad, 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 and also David Hayter being sad and more sad stuff, remember to like this video and subscribe to the no. Um, I don't know if I have any goofs. I think I was just too spectacular. I thought you were gonna say ghosts don't fuck and I was like, well, they might want to. I mean, I saw that movie. Hey, the pigeons are awesome. You shut up.